Hi guys, and welcome back to the Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media. My name is Pia. My name is Milan. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about the Formula One Grand Prix of China. And before we get into it, play the intro. Hit it. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> did I startle you? Because yes, I was about to say something and then you just jumped in. So I would say overall the Shanghai or the China GP was actually a really, really good race. I agree. I was very happy yes. with it. Uh, there was a lot of action from, I would say, third place down. Second place, I think, so uh, Max Verstappen and Lando kind of just drove their own race. For the second half, for sure, yeah. for sure. At the beginning, there was a little bit more action mm -hmm. i mean a little bit of fighting for position there so of course we had max verstappen in the lead immediately also mm -hmm. driving away with it i mean as expected really actually not he um actually alonso attacked the front mm -hmm. didn't he take go into first place for a second and then he was overtaken because he was defending quite hard and then people were saying on the on the mic Lando's engineer was like it seems like Alonso is using his tire a lot more than we are he was fighting for second oh, position okay. I thought I couldn't remember for second but not because like Max started on pole and then he had a great start so he immediately kept oh, and the like position five laps in he was five seconds up or something exactly like that. Yeah, exactly yeah, okay. but Alonso did fight with Perez for mm -hmm. for quite a minute with Checo and then that's when they were saying because the McLarens were after the two of them yeah. that Alonso is pushing quite hard mm -hmm. and I mean it was true he He, he was fighting hard. He eventually lost his position to Perez. And then he started going backwards in the ranks a little bit. Yep. Um, but I also think the China Grand Prix, the, the track as is, is very interesting. I feel like it's mm -hmm. a little bit atypical from yeah. a lot of the other tracks, especially it has uh, several of those long mm -hmm. turns, which are also exciting as a overtaking point because mm -hmm. there was a lot of different places or not a lot of different places but there were several different places where uh overtaking opportunities were available mm -hmm. to Two them drs zones exactly but before track. we get into the race more i just wanted to um thank the people who tuned in for our mm -hmm. live stream hangout session yesterday yes. We had a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of it fun. Was, it was really nice chatting with you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. We will definitely want to do this more frequently. It's not um, like a watch party, watch party, because we can't really show no. the the races. But we just want to hang out with you guys. And chat. Exactly. And just, just, just have a good time. Yeah, we'll chat about the race. Have a good time. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so thank you for everybody who was there, especially a shout out to... Nicholas and also Cactus Tiger because they were chatting along with us. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, it has been noted and it's appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like it's been noted in school. Okay. <laughs> I know. Um, But anyways, back to the race. I agree. It was a great race. I think it was, I mean, lots happened. We did have two safety cars. Correct. So first off, the first safety car was unfortunately our dear Valtteri Bottas. Mm -hmm. um, his engine just stopped. Or his power unit gave out. Yeah, it just stopped. So then stopped. his engine just turned off. Exactly. And then he was actually off track because it was like a corner. Mm -hmm. And then he just went straight. Yes. But he didn't hit anything. No. He just like hit the brakes. Not and even in the gravel, really. He no. was on the paved part of it still. And mm -hmm. then um, the car just turned off and then they were not able to move it. No. They were they were trying to push it and they were not able to. Yes. So I don't know if like the brakes or something was engaged. Mm -hmm. So then they had to get the tow truck essentially and that's when it went from um, yellow flag mm -hmm. to virtual yes. to full safety. Mm -hmm. um, then there was a lot of um, pitting obviously. Yes, lots of pitting. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and then people, so I think the general strategy was for most of them or at least for the top was medium and then hearts. Mm -hmm. And then we had the people in the back who went first on the soft. Yes. And then they ended up on the hearts. And then because they pitted again, um, a lot of them ended on the mediums. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very interesting. I think Alonso had the most in interesting strategy yes. out of them all. I think so he ended up switching when everyone switched to the mediums or to the hearts again. He ended up switching to the soft. Yes. But knowing that he would not be able to 
take them because I think it was over 25 laps at that point. I think it was closer to 30 laps. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, he would not be able to take them to the end. So I think they tried something. However, yeah, I did watch his post-race interview and he mm -hmm. said, yeah, we tried something. And I mean, we still got P7 and yeah. fastest lap. Yes. Um, so he was overall, he seemed pretty happy with I, it. I think also we when we were watching it, we were all just like, why is he doing this? Why is he mm -hmm. going on to the softs? But I mean, his plan did pay off a little bit because yes, of course, he ended up pitting again. So he lost the 20 plus seconds, but he did make it through the ranks quite fast. So he had passed, I think it was Ocon, Hulkenberg, Hamilton, and then Piastri. And yeah. he did it at a quite a fast pace with the soft he to, tires. He had to do it within like 10 laps. Yes, which is and very then, impressive. Um, and then he was significantly faster because everyone was at that point at like at least 20 uh, laps old uh, tires mm -hmm. so he was uh, much much faster and that's why he also got the fastest lap mm -hmm. of the race yes um so yeah but however when he pitted for that last time he ended up dropping out of the points for a hot second yes so he yeah. i think he came in in like 11th or mm -hmm. something and then he made up some um spots yes so that was really cool to see we did have a second safety car because there was an incident with yuki Yuki spun out. I forgot he who... He got hit by Magnuson. Oh, that's who it was. Yeah. Yes. Um, in the hairpin as well. Mm -hmm. I That was 100% Magnuson's fault. And mm -hmm. he also ended up getting a 10-second penalty, mm -hmm. which is really unfortunate because that also meant that the RB cash app, Visa Cash App mm -hmm. team had a double DNF. Yeah, because after Yuki's... DNF, mm -hmm. the situation with between Lance and Danny happened. Yes. So essentially, um, it was actually still during the safety car. Um, the, so it was about to restart. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so, but you don't know when Max obviously will start the race again, yes. you know? So you're just waiting. So everyone was breaking into the hairpin. Mm -hmm. And then um, it seems like Lance wasn't paying attention. He hit Danny yeah. from the back mm -hmm. and then kind of scooped him up. And then Danny ended up hitting... Uh, Oscar from the back. Yes. Well, it was also because I think it was because um, Alonso had just came back from the pits mm -hmm. and he had locked up on his fresh soft tires, which bunched up everybody mm -hmm. behind him. So then, yes, exactly. So Lance ended up crashing into Danny into his back. Mm -hmm. And then Danny also went into um, Oscar's Oscar's. back. So Oscar ha ended up having some floor damage. He did finish the race. but And his I think his diffuser in the back was like damaged as well oh okay gotcha yeah but he his pace just wasn't quite as strong i think as uh, lando's pace overall yesterday mm -hmm. and then danny unfortunately had to also end the race he couldn't finish the race mm -hmm. and then there was also a couple of 10 second penalties like you said magnuson had a 10 second penalty danny ended up getting a 10 second penalty N no however mm -hmm. because he couldn't oh. um do the 10 second penalty because he dnf'd they ended up giving him a three grid penalty for the miami race mm -hmm. and then i think sergeant got a 10 second penalty so danny got sorry danny mm -hmm. got a, a penalty for overtaking under the safety car correct yes um so i think maybe that was like on pit, pit exit i think that must have probably happened i'm not because, quite sure because because he... that's why uh sergeant got a um penalty uh. because it was on pit exit so essentially there's the white line that determines mm -hmm. and then um i think i don't know who it was uh um, was uh, past him, was already ahead of him, and then he still, he just accelerated and went around him. Yeah. So he got a penalty for that, which is really unfortunate. Lance got the 10-second penalty for hitting... Danny. Dan, he also mm -hmm. got, I think, two points for that. Yeah, Danny also got penalty points mm -hmm. for And his... then Alonso got this weekend as well. So Alonso is sitting at six and Lance is sitting at five at the mm. moment. I think you have to hit like 11 or 12 for to get in like a race ban or something like that oh gotcha gotcha i'm not even familiar with those rules specifically um yeah um which yeah it was really unfortunate because danny had a really really great race weekend mm -hmm. though he was definitely aiming for points yeah it, i think it would have been very possible the mm -hmm. same thing with uh valtteri bottas yes again his race was ruined when he was actually would have been competing for points mm -hmm. was it i think qatar or bahrain where he was his pit crew messed oh. up his race and then he ended up, you know, he because he was fighting for points. Mm -hmm. What I will say I'm very excited about is that we again have a Haas in the points. I know. Which it's I think seemed, such a surprise. I think like three years ago seemed impossible. Yeah. And now, not saying on a regular, but 
um, positively often. Yes, I mean, let's look over let at the, look at the driver standing. So mm -hmm. Nico is the one who has been getting the points, mm -hmm. and he has four points in total now. Mm -hmm. So it's the fourth race, right? Yep. Um. So maybe he's. I don't know if he got one point for every single race. I mean, yesterday he did get the one point, mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot more already than. It started off last season for them. Absolutely. So that's very exciting to see. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to give a shout out to Landon Norris. He did have a really nice race. He did end up in second place, which mm -hmm. was a little bit surprising because he had been complaining about the pace mm -hmm. this weekend or the McLaren overall didn't seem to have quite the pace that they wanted to. But he did have, um, yeah, he ended up second. He did stay on top of or closer to Max for longer than I had anticipated him after the second mm -hmm. safety car. Mm -hmm. Yes, at the end, he did have a 13 second difference. Yeah. But there was a time, uh, quite a long stint where it was just a couple of seconds, less than, than usually. And then Perez, who was behind him, was six seconds behind Lando, yes. which I think is a lot. And I was very surprised that he didn't catch him because he was in third for quite some time. Yeah. So that just shows again, I mean, I mean it's just questionable what other people could do with a Red Bull potentially. Yes, I do want to say um, Norris in his post-race interview, he did say that um, it was good because he was able to race in in clean air essentially yes, the whole time. That makes a big and difference. And he was able to yeah. just race his own race and he said it was good to see like, like the pace of the car and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so he seemed like happy about the trip trajectory yes. that they're on um yeah what uh checo he said after the post race yeah he still was like he uh, he doesn't know or like they're still looking into where he's missing the pace because i honestly thought mm -hmm. and i said this during the live stream and i said this beforehand that i think it would be in a red bull one two mm -hmm. unless uh checo gets caught up in the sauce yeah. and he did get caught up in the sauce yeah. and then um yeah, and for whatever reason, um, he didn't really have the pace, and that's quite like he has almost twenty seconds on, um, Max Verstappen. To mm -hmm. be fair, he obviously had to fight and defend yes. also along the way, mm -hmm. so it's not like he was able to like constantly race in clean air. That makes a big difference. Yeah, too. but it also it took him quite longer than anticipated to pass those people yes um, yeah he, that's what i meant yeah with the sauce oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but i mean it's just yeah. like he was in the sauce for longer yeah. than anticipated mm -hmm. um i also want to give a shout out to sir lewis hamilton he did start 18th and then he ended up in the points ninth mm -hmm. he did have a lot of complaints along the way but i'm happy to see that he did make it into the points i did expect it of him i did so too um but of course you never know because also traffic can be, be tricky and it seems like this car was not willing to turn i mean like, not at all we unfortunately we didn't really see russell uh drive because mm -hmm. russell was just kind of by himself a lot of he times he wasn't really yeah. doing um like he wasn't really fighting a lot there was mm -hmm. a few times where he was like within drs of carlos and mm -hmm. one time like i think Alon alonso and stuff like that but um so we couldn't really see him but it seems like um like hamilton like especially through the hairpin and stuff like that this car was like Oof. like yeah it bolt. took so much effort to just yeah. Turn it around the corner. Talking about that, Alonso save at the end of the race. <gasps> if you haven't seen it, go Oof. look that up. Yes. Alonso save China GP 2024. Yes. Insane. Turn 16, the last left hand mm -hmm. turn before the final, um, what's it called? The finish line, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. His his right back tire got into the gravel and snapped, mm -hmm. essentially. But he was immediately, I mean, it took. I said it yesterday too. It probably took so much effort to snap it, mm -hmm. get it back yeah, literally into. If you, if you watch it from his <sighs> view, like the way he just snaps the steering wheel, and like you have to understand, you can't do this. Right? No, you have to like, do it from mm. here. So yeah. that's yeah, it was very impressive. Yeah. Um. Very very good. I did wanted to say uh, oh. I wrote down a few things Ooh. in case I didn't mention them. Um. So, um. The Alpines were not bad so esteban actually ended up coming 11th mm -hmm. however esteban was also racing with upgrades that pierre does not have yet oh so, interesting um, okay gotcha. esteban was racing with a new floor and a new chassis mm -hmm. um however pierre said that he is happy that they're obviously working because they are knocking on that 10th place mm -hmm. of course to be fair you also have three dnfs i was just gonna say yes probably significantly might be faster or at least at their their those would be their competitors correct however 
Um, it is good to see that Alpine is kind of figuring out what their issue is. I know, is. yeah, because they've been struggling quite hard this season. Um, let's see right here. Um, and then also, like, um, I think Pierre would have done a little bit better if they didn't have that incident during his pit stop. He, oh, he yes. His car fell off the jack, so mm -hmm. he thought he was ready to go. Then he started accelerating. Then one of the pit crew people fell, fell over. Yeah. And then they had to get the car back onto the jack to uh, attach the tire because their back right was still missing yes, or something like correct. that. Uh -huh. So fortunately, no one got hurt. Yes, but and it was it also oh, go ahead. Co it cost him a lot of time. Yeah, it cost him a lot of time, and it was also nice to hear him over the radio, making sure that mm -hmm. his uh, pit crew member was all right, but everybody seemed to be okay. Mm -hmm. And then I think the last thing I just wrote down, which after watching these post race interviews, mm -hmm. is that um, I don't think I've ever seen Danny this upset. Mm. Like he was like, like you know how he's like Mr. Smiley. Oh right? yes, uh -huh. but like. I have never seen him so upset, especially, I mean, to be fair, the journalists were also like a little bit antagonizing us uh, because they were saying like, hey, do you know that Lando Stroll, called you and oh, Lance Str called you an idiot. Lance called you an idiot. And, and then you can also see, obviously, and then you see a reporter also showing at him. Um, however, uh -huh. in Lance's post-race interview, he just called it a racing incident. He's like, yeah, it's just a, you know, weird racing incident, a weird racing incident that there's breaking at the hairpin and you weren't paying attention. <laughs> I don't know. I think yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty, um, I don't like his lax attitude about it mm -hmm. because. Because he end, did ruin. Two people's races. Yeah. He, well, I mean, I don't know what Oscar would have been able to do because he did also admit that um, his first half of the race before the damage. Yeah, well, but he did ruin Danny's race and then mm -hmm. at least hampered oscar's race maybe he would have been able to defend against alonso you know maybe so i don't know but yeah so it's it's a little um so it's a little bit unfortunate um also people are not happy online with him yeah <laughs> yeah i, I don't and know if also, he's the most popular <laughs> also, to be fair also, the formula one channel who posted the f the post-race interviews they just put him on the thumbnail smiling <laughs> and they're like everyone in the comments is like they know what they're yeah, doing of course. like of there's course. two other people in the thumbnail as well but he's uh -huh. just like eh, or something <laughs> like that i'm like no <laughs> funny um, yeah. um but yeah i mean i i get it though from danny because he did have a good race weekend like you said on him. he he has a lot of pressure, and has on, zero him. pressure on him you know? i mean like he has a seat as long as he wants to or as long as daddy wants him to well as long as dad owns it I yeah guess. exactly yeah. But um, yeah, but overall, I definitely think it was a really fun uh, Grand Prix, much more fun than I had anticipated. Yes, I thought it would be. I, I was afraid it would be like race one. Yeah, exactly. But no, it's the, the last couple of races have been really, really entertaining. I do also want to give a shout out to Zhou Guan Yu, yes. the first ever Chinese Grand Prix or Chinese F1 driver. And he got to compete in his home country now for the very first time. <laughs> I will say in his post-race interview, he said the first time a Chinese um, racer at the Shanghai Grand Prix in 20 years. So I think maybe he's the first F1 racer, but he's not the first Chinese racer. No, yeah, that. exactly. That's okay. not what I meant. Yeah, just, to, just to also... Yeah, yeah, so he's definitely the first F1 driver to participate. Also, we released a really uh, cool video about Zhou Guan Yu mm -hmm. on the channel. So if you guys want to learn more about him, mm -hmm. um, it's actually very impressive because you made the video and mm -hmm. I ended up you know, watching it. And um, it's very cool what he has done. Yeah. And he's really the definition of a trailblazer. Yeah. And it's really, really cool to see someone like that on a grid. I do hope that he can stay on the grid, but I think he's definitely in contention. At for, risk. At yeah. risk. Um, Sergeant, we've talked about this. Yeah. Magnuson, we've talked about this. Yeah, Bottas, he... unfortunately, I think maybe he has the best, hopefully the best uh, options out there yeah. or best chances because of his um, also record mm -hmm. and he's obviously still doing well he's just unfortunate in the wrong car yeah yeah but I mean Joe did come in 14th which is not the points that we were hoping for for yeah. him and you could see how important the race is for him and how emotional and how mm -hmm. much pressure it was so I hope he did have at least a good experience it sounded like it in his post-race interview that good. he was like and then they showed also footage of him like on the track on the grid and then mm -hmm. like like how overwhelmed is he with emotion because the, the um oh don't even talk about it you're crowd, gonna make me cry <laughs> <the crowd. laughs> oh. weakness is sad sports stories or happy sports stories. any sports stories yeah. like one of my guilty pleasures <laughs> is sports movies like anything and it, i mean i'm already getting teary-eyed it's just <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, but like you have to admit, it is a beautiful story. Like he's the first F1 driver to ever, like a first Chinese person to ever compete in it Formula is. One. He got to compete at home. Home yeah, for the very very first time and so it is a lot of pressure but it's also beautiful and you could see anytime he did have some beautiful moments in a race where he passed right in front of the people yeah and just, right in front of the grandstand exactly and if you heard them go crazy i'm sure i pushed him off uh, i'm sure i mean so it's like it's yeah. it's beautiful and like, it's cool that we got to witness that you exactly know? exactly so it's 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 really really nice and also we don't know when we'll have the next chinese f1 driver because there's nobody in the or maybe there is watch the video to find out <laughs> <laughs> no but there really isn't no not it's at the moment something that he wants to work on to exactly. make happen so um I, I you know i hope so you know we yeah. want more racing i'm sure they i don't know if there are any other tracks in china mm -hmm. but i'm like use it yeah you know yeah but i mean let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of the race do you mm -hmm. have any guesses what will happen in miami or more on the fort lauderdale race <laughs> yeah. so it will happen in two weeks i'm excited about that but of course more racing will happen this upcoming weekend in a couple of days we'll bring out our weekly racing um schedule video so you can find out what you can watch where you can watch and when you can watch it and you can also as always find all the details on our website raceplazamedia.com And I think that's it. That's it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe. And we will be seeing you guys here tomorrow at the Daily Racing Show. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.